The world needs an end to plastic pollution. And I ask you to deliver this instrument this week that puts us on the road for just that, for thousands of days, months, and years to come. On November 25, more than 170 countries converged in Busan to negotiate a new legally binding global treaty to end plastic pollution, including marine pollution. This is the fifth and final round of talks since 2022, when the United Nations Environment Assembly adopted Resolution 514, agreeing to adopt a legally binding global plastics treaty by the end of 2024. But why does the world need a global plastic treaty? Plastic pollution is one of the most pressing environmental issues of our lifetime. The annual global production of plastic doubled from 234 million tonnes in 2000 to 460 million tonnes in 2019. Nearly half of this was produced in Asia, followed by North America and Europe. But it's not like we are managing it better. Out of the 400 million tonne plastic waste generated annually, only 9% of plastics are recycled. According to reports, over 8 million tonnes of plastic waste end up in the oceans each year. This poses significant threats to aquatic life, human health and the marine ecosystem as plastic takes anywhere from 20 to 500 years to decompose. Studies estimate that by 2050, there could be more plastic in the oceans than fish. Additionally, plastic, which is produced from fossil fuels, also contributes 3.4% of global greenhouse gas emissions. These scary figures reiterate the need for a globally binding treaty. The main aim of these negotiations is to establish a global set of rules that will address plastic pollution through its life cycle from fossil fuel-based production and the challenges of managing plastic disposal and waste. While some progress was made across the last four intergovernmental negotiating committee sessions, the talks still have not adequately addressed the need to reduce primary plastic production. So what is on the INC5 negotiating table? While developed countries led by the United States submitted a unified proposal attributed to 37 nations, developing countries appeared more fragmented. 90 nations from Africa, Latin America and island states came together to propose a shared CRP, but like-minded countries like Saudi Arabia chose to submit standalone proposals. Despite their differences, the proposals submitted by developed nations and the African bloc exhibit several points of alignment. This includes the establishment of a financial mechanism to assist developing countries in meeting treaty obligations and the mobilization of private sector contributions to supplement public funding. However, despite the overarching goals alignment, the countries have failed to agree on the framing and language of how to proceed with production caps. While countries like Saudi Arabia, Iran, Russia, Kazakhstan, Egypt, Kuwait, Malaysia and India have expressed resistance to stricter mandate, Rwanda, Peru and the European Union have recommended ambitious targets for curbing plastic pollution. Rwanda has proposed a 40% reduction target by 2040, with 2025 as the baseline year. Meanwhile, India banned the use of single-use plastics, covering 19 categories in 2022. However, the country has said that a decision on the issue of including certain plastic items for phase-out in the final treaty should be pragmatic and regulation should be nationally driven, taking into account national circumstances. As negotiations for a global treaty to end plastic pollution approach the December 1 deadline in Busan, developing countries, including LMCs, need to prioritize collaboration over isolation. This can ensure that their interests are effectively represented while contributing to a strong, unified position. <laughs>